Hello, N4H and H here. Jeff, uh, one of the supporters of N4H and H Radio through Patreon, so one of our Patreon supporters who make this channel possible, had a question, and I thank him for the question. I thought I may have covered this as part of some other video, but I can't find it myself, so maybe I did not. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot this video regarding uh, QRP operation with the LNR Precision Mountain Topper radios. So if you're not into that, well, then you may not be um, interested in this video. But uh, this involves the little QRP uh, radios that are CW only that many of the soda and some POTA operators will use. And then, you know, just QRP enthusiasts in general. So the question is, how do you use a bio NO battery with one of these rigs? And I'll pull the rig out here in a second. Uh, because if you look at LNR Precision's website, the specs on their radios, um, you are not to exceed 13 volts DC. And these bio NO LIFEPO 4 batteries will charge up to uh, well over 13 volts, um, ab about 13 and a half. So you, you've got to be careful about using one of these with a, um, an LNR Precision Mountain Topper radio. Now, you'll see this other battery here. This is actually what I normally use, and I purchased this years ago at an Airsoft store called Airsoft Atlanta, and I, they just have it private labeled for them, so they call it a Red Tiger, but it's, the, the specs are what is important. It's a 3,000 milliamp hour 25C, it's a LiPo, lithium polymer battery. Now, the label down here, you may not be able to read it, but it, it tells you that it can deliver 75 amps continuous, 150 amp bursts. It's 11.1 .1 volts, and that's, that means that it's made with three of those LiPo cells. And, uh, you know, it's not unlike our HTs. They'll say 7 point, uh, uh, you know, 2 volts or what have you, and... Uh, really, they charge up to 8.2, 8.3. I've even had them charged to 8.5. Uh, same with this. This actually, from a fresh start, will be, um, it'll be about, th oh, 12.1 to 12.5 volts, even though it says 11.1. So I've not been able to kill this thing. Now, you're not supposed to let these discharge under... Uh, three volts per cell. So in this case, I wouldn't want to go below nine volts. But the truth is, my plan is I would never let it go below 9.9, 3.3 volts per cell, just as a safety factor. And the good th news is the MTR radios, these uh, LNR Precision Mountain Toppers, um, at least the newer versions, perhaps the old too, I'm not sure, uh, have a digital readout in them that tells you what voltage level they are being powered by. So you just keep an eye on that. And my plan is to, you know, when it gets to 10 volts, you know, pretty much I'll just shut her down. I've literally not been able to get it to discharge that low. It, it just, the, the radio is a miser. It, it just doesn't take a lot of current. So uh, I've not actually been able to kill this battery on a summit. So I've, I've, I've more or less been operating from this one. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you know, I have the Velcro and I, I, I stick this on the clipboard that I attach the radio to. So you've probably seen that in some of the other videos. So this is a great battery. But what if I'm going to use my Bioino, which is, of course, going to start out from a fresh charge at above 13 volts? All right. So let me uh, open the radio up here. So I carry it in this little, uh, what was intended to be a case for a, uh, a GoPro. But I ordered it, and uh, it comes with the foam insert, and I just cut it out the way I wanted it. And I, you've seen that in some other videos as well. My Morse paddles here, a backup 9-volt battery. Uh, this is a, a little digital recorder that I can put in line and record my, uh, my activations in case I think I need to go back and review something. Nice little cable pouch up here. And, uh, and then here is the radio. And thanks to Kyle, uh, AA0Z, who sent this nice cover here that, that I can snap onto the radio before I put it into the uh, case, you know, just to protect it from any of these connectors or what have you scratching up the screen. So thank you, Kyle. Um, so let's, uh, let's get this out, and I'll show you how I deal with the, uh, the voltage. Let me get the camera Maybe uh, aimed over a little bit more in this direction. All right, so 
radio here, bio in over here. Now let, let me show you what I've done as far as the power cable is concerned. Um, LiPo batteries are very common in the RC car world. And a lot of them use this type of a connector here. It's called a Deans, a Deans, and it's a very lightweight. The, the Anderson Power Pole, which is great for ham radio, absolutely a must-have in my book, uh, because all the BioInno batteries come with these, and you can get these batteries, you know, you can get big versions of these, and you could use them to operate emergency power from your base station. Uh, and they all come with the Anderson power poles already on them. And I understand that it, uh, you know, in a, in a case of a regional or national emergency, the emergency uh, personnel that show up tend to also have everything equipped with power poles. So if you were to help out, uh, you'd want a power pole connection on your radio and you would maybe be able to borrow a battery from somewhere else. So uh, thank you to KC4WZB for turning me on to these Anderson power poles. All right. So back to the radio and connecting it so the um, the Anderson power pole is what I use normally and I have that type of a connector here the female is on the uh, lipo battery because this is a typical look of how this battery would be equipped for an RC car they would use the Anderson and also airsoft uh, rifles so and then here's the other end this of course is the cable that comes with the uh, mtr 4 b v2 now that plugs in right here on the back of the radio and then i would normally just plug it straight into that lipo battery but if i am going to use the bioinno battery um well first of all <clears throat> anderson power pole does not mate to a dean's well i'll show you i'll show you what i've done um the thing is i've got to get the voltage down from this bio -ino. so what I did and I'm gonna pull it out of the pouch over here I made an adapter okay so it's got an Anderson power poles on one side Dean's on the other hmm hint hint but there's more to this adapter than what meets the eye in here soldered in series with the red wire is a diode a 1N4007 just a standard silicon diode and that will drop the voltage it's dropping it about 0.6 volts now uh what what so what happens is is when i i plug this bioinno battery in and then i plug in this side see is got the female deans there's a diode in here that's dropping the voltage enough that it's not going to damage the mtr 4B. Now let me. I'm going to turn the radio on, and you can look at the display down here. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that it says 12.8 volts. 12.8. Now, this bioinno has not been charged in a while. It may have bled off a tenth of a volt, but normally, uh, it's 12.9. So, if that bioinno is freshly charged, it's going to be 12.9 volts here after going through that diode that, that's dropping the voltage by about 0.6 volts. So that's how I get away at with using the BioNO battery because remember the radio operates on anywhere from 5.5 to 13 volts and you cannot exceed the 13 volts. So the diode did the trick, uh, gave me the adapter I needed as well to be able to get over to Dean's and um, you know, nice little setup there. And I just carry that as a backup with me in case I need to use the bioinno. Now I don't always carry the bioinno with me, but I'm usually out with a team and somebody else may have a bioinno and if I were to kill <laughs> somehow kill this lipo which we've not managed to do yet, I could just, you know, borrow one of their batteries or what have you to complete my activation. So there you go. Um, turn it back off again. Nice uh, a nice neat little setup just and you see I heat shrink this so you can't actually see the diode but it is in there in series with the red wire now it's important that you install the diode with the proper polarity you know the diode is going to have a stripe on one side and so what you want to do is the or the direction you want to put that stripe is toward the radio not in the direction of the battery itself so the stripe side of the diode needs to be soldered in the red wire now red wire in such a way 
that the stripe is on the radio side. See, this is the wire going to the radio. You've got to get that polarity correct. You absolutely have to. Red wire diode, 1 in 4007 is enough, and the stripe side of the diode needs to face the radio connector, the, the wire going to the radio itself. And it will just take the 13.5 volts, go through the diode, and diodes have a voltage drop of about 0.6 volts. And so uh, that drops it down to the 12.9. So like I said, this has probably been sitting a while charged because to be honest with you, after I got the LiPo, I just haven't really used this. Uh, so it's probably dropped just a little bit and that's why you saw 12.8 on the uh, di digital display there. Okay, so I hope I covered everything that I meant to cover <laughs> uh, regarding the batteries, but um, you know, the BioNO is certainly a, a very viable option. This is a three amp hour uh, BioNO, by the way. And let me let me explain. Some, by the way, this is their this is the charging cable. You buy the charger from BioNO, and it plugs in here. The other wires are obviously for the business end. Believe it or not, both of these batteries provide 3,000 milliamp hours. They're both the same capacity. This one's just a little bit easier to transport. Uh, there's a an actual nice little pouch in my backpack that it just slides down into. So this has become my standard, and, and, and really I've got the 9 volt here for the backup. Now the radio doesn't put out but about 2 watts, I think, with the 9 volt, if that. Uh, but that, hey, that's fascinating too. I mean, how thrilling would it be for you to use a 9 volt battery using 2 watts and maybe work somebody, you know, 2,000 miles away? As a matter of fact, my friend Richard in one RBD was running 4.2 watts in North Georgia and he worked a station in New Zealand um, w uh, that was I think 8700 miles away so uh, <laughs> with 4.2 watts so that's that's the amazing part of CW by the way it takes a lot more sideband power to do what you can do with 5 watts or 4 watts of CW so uh, and of course those of you who do CW know that the world of CW is, a, is much more quiet than sideband is so if you haven't uh, gotten into cw if you're thinking about it i definitely encourage you to do so um, look into long island cw club they do a very very good job of teaching you how to head copy so you don't even have to write things down they get you speed up in record time uh, a friend of mine went from not knowing cw to doing 18 words a minute in uh, in about four months so uh, they have a really good program, Long Island CW Club. So I definitely would encourage that. And, and in the interim, while you're trying to you know, practice up and get your speed up, get on the air and chase summits on the air station. You've seen me talk about that. There's a whole playlist on this channel about that. Because uh, it's not like you're going to have a conversation and you got to be really, really great at CW. Uh, they're generally going to be sending at anywhere from 16 to 20 words per minute. Um, some of them actually send it down at around 12 and 13, but the, uh, you know, you already, you see their posts, so you already know their call sign, you know what frequency they're on, you know what mountain they're on, so they don't even have to tell you that. Um, so you just basically send out your call sign, they respond, they send you a signal report, you send them one back, and uh, 73 and your call sign, and, and you're done. So it's a really good way to get your code speed uh up to faster uh, copying and you know and I, I do encourage you to as quickly as possible move over to learning how to do head copy don't have to write it down okay hey thanks a lot for watching the video I hope uh, you found it informative and, and helpful and uh, thank you Jeff for bringing this to my attention uh, like I said I may have covered this as part of another video but this video now will be dedicated to this subject of how do you deal with the voltage uh, you know so you don't exceed the 13 volt rating of a LNR precision mountain topper uh, CW transceiver hey thank you to my patreon support team uh, thank you to Jeff who's a member of that team for the again for this uh, question and uh, if any of you would like to become a Patreon supporter of the channel to help me further this mission, uh, it would be much appreciated. A small monthly donation, um, really of any amount, but there are three levels in there. Uh, the, uh, the executive and VIP level uh, support um, members have some access to exclusive content that is not available to anyone else. So uh, consider doing that. You can go to www 
Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash N four H N H. Patreon dot com forward slash N four H N H. And if you would, please like the video. That helps us tremendously with our YouTube uh, standings. And so it makes the channel more visible to others. And as we grow in number, I hope that maybe, you know, some of the manufacturers of the equipment will start to take our comments more seriously. So if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you do subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Again, thanks for watching in 73 from N4 H&H. &H.